Let's talk about 7.2 solving systems of equations. Now we are talking about linear equations. That means we are talking about straight lines. Now systems, as you recall, a system is two or more equations that, are, um, that exist at the same time that help represent a little bit of a more complex type problem. So a system. And linear, a system of linear equations means that there are two lines, okay? Two lines. Now, I want to talk a little bit about solving these systems, okay? Before we get into solving by graphing, let's just talk about what solving is. If we are solving a system of linear equations, we are finding the unknown values, and here's a sample of a system of linear equations, we're finding the unknown values that satisfy both equations. So if this is my little system, for an example, okay? Can any of you tell, right now, by looking at those two equations, what x and y are? And of course, in both equations, the y is the exact same in both equations, and the x is the exact same number in both equations. So what two numbers am I looking for, anyone? Seven and three. Very good. You thought it was 6 and 4, okay. 6 plus 4 is 10. Very good. But 6 minus 4 okay, is 2. Oh. 5, uh, 5 plus 5 is 10, but 5 minus 5 is not 4. So what we're looking for is we're looking for an x value and a y value that work for both equations. So does everyone see? And I'm still seeing some confused looks. But if we have 7 plus 3, that indeed does equal 10. And if we have 7 minus 3, that equals 4. Does everyone see that? So the solutions here are x equals 7 and y equals 3. Now there's different ways of solving equations, and we're going to explore a number of them, but I want you to understand what solving means. It basically means finding the missing pieces. Okay, so let's just jot that down. So solving a system of equations, solving, oops, that's not what I want to do. Let's do the highlighter. Here we go. There we go. Solving a system of equations means determining the missing values. And so here, of course, we have uh, x and y, x and y in the equations. Or the other, the other way to look at it is find the one value for x and the one value for y that satisfy or make true, see it's an equation, they make both equations true. That's what satisfy the equations means. All right? So you, you guys uh, correctly determined that in this equation it's 7 and 3. Okay? I'm going to make up another one real quick here. Okay? I'm going to do a plus b is um, 15 and a times b is 36. What are the two numbers there? Who's going to be the first one? Tell me what those numbers are. 12 and 3. 12 and 3. Who agrees with 12 and 3? Okay, I'm glad you agree. You, you, you gave me the answer, yeah. Anybody else agree? Yeah, there's a few others. Okay, let's just check. Let's just check it out. So if we have 12 here and I add 3, do I get 15? Yes. And if I have 12 times 3, do I get 36? Yes. Okay. Now some of the equations are going to be pretty easy. We're going to be able to solve them just by looking at them. But what does a solution look like? if we are graphing. So let's move now to solving by graphing. So what does a solution look like if we're graphing? All right, so I'm gonna go back to this first example here. I'm just gonna kind of erase some of this stuff so I can, so I can work here, okay? Da-da-da, all right. So what we're gonna do is we're going to graph, okay? I'm gonna get rid of this too. And we'll move this. So what we want to do is set up a table of values for each equation. And we only need two, don't we, to form a line. We only need two. These are linear, 
so here's here's my little uh, coordinate plane over here okay so x plus y equals 10 let's determine some values for that uh, in a table of values so if x is 5 then y is 5 uh, if x is 0 y is 10 if y is 10 whoops or, sorry if x is 0 y is 10 if x is 10 then y is 0 everyone see that 0 plus 10 is 10 10 plus 0 and we could go on but it's a good idea to think about the intercepts if possible so 0 10 is going to be a point and 10 0 is going to be a point and so for our first graph we're going to graph this line that would extend through these two points right here now does it extend into the negative uh, area no does it extend down here into the negatives well let's just see could we have something like negative 1 for an x value negative 1 plus what gives us 10 is there a value for y that would add up to 10 now what about that if I had negative 1 on a number line if I started here and I wanted to get to 10 how many spaces would I have to go I'd have to go 11 spaces you see that so negative 1 and 11 certainly would be on this line okay so there's no real restrictions there and could we have negative uh, y values well sure what if we had uh, 13 so 13 plus what gives me 10 well that would be negative 3 see that so if I went over to 11 12 13 I would have to go to negative 3 and that would be on the line doing a table of values I I've found in the past honestly in all my years of teaching I found that like uh, creating a graph table of values like uh, kids struggle with this and I don't know why I'm not really sure why so you know we've been working on this for the last few sections so hopefully hopefully you understand this and you need to practice this okay just think of two values that satisfy the equation put them there plot them on the graph okay so I'm not sure if you're getting this or if you're bored with this but it looks like it, maybe this is mm, yeah not you are not too confident with this it seems like so let's do this one okay x minus y equals 4 again let's just do some values x minus y equals 4 um, 5 minus 1 how about that good 7 minus 3 awesome what about mm, oh I'm gonna go crazy now what about negative 1 <gasps> Oh no. Can we do that? Negative 1 minus what gives us 5? Or 4. Ah, kind of gave it away there. Five. Not 5, no. Negative 5. Thank you. Okay, negative 1 minus a negative 5. Look at this. Negative 1 minus negative 5. That's negative 1 plus 5 equals 4. Yeah, burn, yeah. Anyways, you don't have to like think of crazy negatives and all that. You don't have to do that. But what I'm saying is that you could generate a whole bunch. Okay, so negative 1, negative 5 is way down here. Okay. Uh, 7 and 3. Oh, let's go to 7 and 3. That's about here. And 5 and 1. 5 and 1 uh, is about here. So guess what? Let's make a line through those points and see what we get. Um, how's my free hand gonna work here not super well come on all right all right that's pretty close okay there's that one there there's that one there there's this one here okay now if you happen to choose the solution to the system of equations which we know is what seven and three guess what I actually uh, ended up picking that that combination this is the answer now how do you know it's the answer sorry the two lines cross there the solution on a graph is where the two lines intersect now why is that because look at seven comma three that is on this line and it's on this line and that is our definition of a solution you see that it's the values of x and y that satisfy both equations at the same time. So, solving systems of, of linear equations, really easy. What you do is you graph both lines, and we've been practicing that all through chapter 6, we practice that. 
graph both lines, and then determine the intersection point, and that is your solution. So x equals 7 and y equals 3.